Right, so today I'm going to show you a quick tutorial on how to one build the CCA uh, carry cancel ladder, and two um, a description of basically how the carry calculation logic works. Actually, I'll start with the carry calculation logic. So, as you can see here, I have a vertical version and a diagonal version of CCA carry logic. Now, the core of it is. Uh, just slab stacks and a comparator at each level. So the way it works is you put the generate at the base of the comparator on this stack and you have a cancel signal to the side. Now a cancel is being used instead of a propagate which is why the adder is called the carry cancel adder. Um, the reason it cancels uh, the reason I'm using cancel instead of a propagate is because um, it allows me to use comparators and use the way that they interpret signal strengths in order to get the calculation out in one tick. Now, without further ado, I'll put a generate in. And as you can see, the generate says that all these are one for a carry. But if I was to put a cancel here, it cancels the generate that I put in here. So instead of a propagate extending the amount of bits that are on, uh, this is actually restricting the amount of bits that are on. A generate just defaults to flooding everything with signal. Now the way this works is when this is on, it's going to go through and light all these up. But then if I was to turn on something at an equal or higher level, these signals will be the same. And when those signals are the same, this is going to be off because of how the comparator takes those inputs. And the same over here. These signals are even, so it's still going to be off. If I was to turn this generate on, it's going to be on again because the generate happened one level above the cancel because now this signal strength is higher than this signal strength. Now it works the same way here so if that signal strength is higher than this signal strength it's going to cancel instead of send a output of one. Another important thing is because of the way that it's using slab stacks as a instant diode it means that the signal won't go down. You see the signal goes up, but it won't go back down. And that makes sure that the ripple's only going upwards. But, but of course, there's no ripple because of the nature of the slab stack system. And it works in exactly the same way here. So there's a generate there, and those two bits are on. But then I can just throw on a cancel, and that bit turns off because the cancel happened one level above. This can be extended as far as the signal can reach. So the, the critical path of this is basically from the first bit to the last comparator. So that means 16 blocks or 15 blocks in range. A 15 blocks in range translates to 8 bits maximum. Now there are ways to extend this by using a different type of carry look ahead on the bottom, but that's more going into hybrid um, adder systems where you put a CCA on the top and a different type of adder on the bottom. Um, there is a possibility of making a 5 tick 16 bit adder by using a CCA and um, Lord de Capo's um, 3 tick C CLE, uh, CLE adder, but I'm not going into that. This is just a very, very basic um, tutorial on how to build one. Now here's a 4-bit version of the CCA that I built earlier and I'll just run you through the logic quickly. Here is an XOR at the start. Now the XNOR gets turned into an XNOR here and the XNOR is what the CCA uses as a generate signal. If you know a bit about logic gates, you'll realize that an XNOR will still be on if both the inputs are off, which you might, which will make you think, hey, but wait a minute, that means that it's sending a generate when both bits are off, and that's not supposed to happen. But keep in mind that the cancel signal is a NOR, 
And the nor is on when both bits are off, so it actually sorts itself out. The cancel happens at the same time as the generate. And because these happen at exactly the same level, oops, because they happen at exactly the same level, the output will still be off. And this is basically how it all goes together. And of course, the XOR is extracted here to be XORed with the carry calculation over here. And I won't go too far into it because this is just how all adders work, where you know if you have a carry calculation that comprises all these bits, that carry calculation output will be XORed with the result of the two bits that are directly above. So that's how why you can see that this XOR is being pulled down below and put into this XOR here. And that would light this up. I'll just show you quickly. Um, here is, well, I'll just do an overflow first. Do a little C out. That should have the top bit on there. And as you can see, because all these have at least one of the bits on, the NOR is disabled which means that all this gets the signal from the generate that happened at the very bottom. So you see this torch is actually the only one that's on in this situation. All the other torches are off. And that torch is on because we activated a generate over here. And then these are all just uh, what would normally be a sending a propagate signal in other types of adders, but in this case, it just does nothing. It does turn off this NOR, though. And that's how CCA handles what RIP would be in a Ripple carry adder. It just throws all this stuff up on the slab stacks. And I'll just run you quickly through... Oh, actually, here's the CN. Same thing can be done with the CN here. As you see, all those turned off. That turns on. I'll tell you the exact timing for the CN afterwards. Uh, first, I'll just run you through this logic here. So XOR, then there's a NOR and XNOR happening. I put a repeater here because I wanted to time this exactly with that. As you can see, the NOR is only one tick, so one tick plus the repeater makes it two tick. The XNOR, the, the fastest possible XNOR is two ticks, so that's that sorted over here. And then that's two ticks there accounted for. Here's the comparator, the comparators that do the carry calculation. That's one tick. Then here is my special XOR design. You can use any XOR for this, really, but this particular design allows me to make the carry cancel adder a four tick adder. And there is a certain design that um, MBZone and I helped with, um, and this and that particular CCA design is actually, um, I'm pretty sure it's the smallest four tick adder, um, four tick eight bit adder uh, ever made. Of course, you, someone can correct me on that, but I haven't seen anything smaller. I can show that at the end of this video. So that's the special XOR, which basically is using a comparator here and some other stuff. I would explain that, but this isn't really the place to be explaining um, XORs. I'm explaining the carry cancel adder. All you need to keep in mind is you can just replace this chunk with your own XOR. Now the output is pretty self-explanatory. That's it. So one tick there, one tick there, two ticks over here. And then the XOR can be timed a lot easier because of the amount of, it doesn't have as much logic to go through to get over here. And that's the basic workings of the CCA in a nutshell, really. Just have to remember, generate stack takes XNOR, and the cancel stack takes a NOR. 
You can also use an AND instead of XOR, XNOR, I mean. Instead of XNOR, you can use the AND uh, bitwise operation. Uh, that's, and that's actually what I used to use before I realized the XNOR could be used in this place. Because it's much simpler to implement. And now I'll just quickly show you um, some of the uh, main CCA designs. This is just one I whipped up quite quickly. Um, warp CCA. Here we go. Here is one of the earlier designs. Um, it's a five tick, but I made it four wide. It's a little on the long side. Um, and as you can see, instead of that weird XOR, like this one over here, I used just um, this type. The same type I used at the front. So if that helps you visualize things better, there you go. And here is the very first um, four tick carry cancel ladder design that I also designed. And yeah, that's it there. It's a bit chunkier than the current one I was showing you earlier. And here is what I'm pretty sure is the smallest one, four, four wide, four tick CCA, compacted by MB zone. And uh, I, I came up with the fairness comparator idea. Pretty proud of that. And this, I'm pretty sure is the, it's the smallest um, four tick eight bit adder. There is a slight problem with this particular design though, because signal strength output is only one on some cases. I'll talk about the signal strength problems in a minute after I go over this final design. This design is what I use in my um, ALU, uh, my data loop even, that I'm going to be using for my new CPU. This particular adder has four signal strength out, so I have plenty of space to connect to other parts of the data loop. For example, by using a torch-based um, right shifter, um, it, it, it really helps with speed improvements. And now I'll just do a quick run over some of the problems with signal strength, which has been somewhat remedied in this case. It's because of the subtraction mode comparator setting. You see, a cancel that happens, actually I'll flip, the, I'll flip the lever here. If a cancel happens right before a generate, it'll, I'll, this will show you the worst case scenario. You can see that the cancel signal coming out here goes into this comparator and it's being, and it's subtracting signal from your generate. So what's happening is, because this happened two spaces away from the generate, it means no matter what, your output is only going to be two signal strength, two signal strength long. So this is that's why you've got this. Like after this far, you'd um, have to put a repeater. Actually, no. In this in this particular design, I'm using uh, an amplified XOR. So that doesn't matter, but for this for this design, that is a problem. I'll show you here. You'll be able to see from these these those lines. So if I was to have a cancel there, and a generate there, and I'll just propagate it, so you can see what's going on. As you can see, oh, I propagated that too much. Yeah, I think that'll do it. Yeah, here we go. See this? It's because there was a cancel two blocks before the generate. And then you only get two signal strength out. Like, that's, this is zero. Nothing's coming out there. But there's signal there. And that's, that's why this is such a big improvement, because now there's room to move stuff around. Because it's designed not to use subtraction mode comparator. 
But of course, this is just an optimization and it's not essential to the design of a CCA. The, the basic design can be achieved with this and you can still get a decent speed at five ticks using some, uh, your own type of XOR with amplification added. And that's about it. The second part was just me going over some of the limitations of the CCA, but actually warp magic. But the um, the first part is really the most important bit, which was me. Oh, wrong one. The the first part of this was the most important bit, which was me showing you exactly how to build a CCA adder. And if you want to see, this is a way a diagonal one could be built. Just came across that just now, actually. And here is a CCA, the newest design being used in a data loop. This is a nine tick data loop, which is pretty fast. If I don't say so myself, less than one second per operation. As in, a, the output can come all the way through here, through there, out here, back in here, and return to this output in exactly nine ticks, which is pretty good. All right, that's it for that tutorial. Um, hope you got everything. I cover the most important stuff over here anyway, so if you just get back to the first half of this video, you'll get the idea of how to build this. And all right, see you next time then.